All right, this is the White Rabbit Galleries podcast where we talk to the artists about their art. We're coming to you from Pedal Stomper Production Studio at White Rabbit Galleries in downtown Barberton. Across the table from me is Jen Florentine, who is a painter who has a show coming up in April at White Rabbit Galleries from April 5th to April 27th. Thanks for joining us, Jen. Thanks for having me. So I'm just going to launch into this first question. How long have you been painting? Uh, about eight years, I think. Um, it didn't actually turn into a business or um, or a professional artist until probably about four years ago. Um, it started as just a hobby, a way to relieve my stress and... Um, and just to have fun and have a hobby and everything. So, and then people started asking me about my paintings and asking me to buy them. And that was a shock to me because I was kind of never expecting it to turn into anything more than just me having fun and relieving some stress. Um, so that's how it started. And quickly thereafter, I, I found myself entering juried shows and entering, um, figuring out art festivals and posting a lot on social media. And it's turned into a fun little business for me. And that's exciting because you're self-taught, right? You haven't taken any traditional lessons in painting? No, I haven't. I mean, I have, um, I I went to school for graphic design, so I do have graphic design experience, but there was no traditional art making in that. Okay. So this is reaching back those eight years. Why, um, why did you pick up the brush the first time? How did that first painting come to be? Well, I remember my husband and I took a trip to, we did a road trip, and we went to Asheville, North Carolina. And I remember walking through their arts district, and I came across an, another artist that had beautiful abstract paintings, and I just fell in love. And I was going through a pretty stressful time at work. Um, I had a full-time job, and I mean, it was a fun job, but it was hard and it was a lot of stress and I needed some way to relieve this. And I thought, I'm going to try it. Like, why not? Like, nobody has to see it. Nobody has to, to ever know that I'm painting except for me. So the first time that I actually picked up a brush and painted, I remember my husband walked in after a couple of hours of painting and he said, wait, you did that? He's like, that's, you did that? Like, yeah, it's, I, I did. And so it was kind of like, wow, I love this. Like, this is great. This is, it's a way to just kind of let your mind go free and take away all of the stress and, and just let yourself loose on canvas. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. That's, that's wonderful. Um, you said there was an abstract painter in Asheville. Are there any particular artists that are an inspiration to you? Um, well, that painter was Molly Corsell in Asheville, North Carolina, who I love. Um, I mean, living artists. I love Richard Claremont. Um, he's in Australia, and he's he does these abstract landscapes, and the color that he uses is just so inspiring, and, and I love it. Um, but almost any artist, you can find something to be inspired by, which I really love. Yeah, I kind of see a little bit of um, George Seurat. The, mm-hmm. as a throwback in your work. And you've actually, you have a piece right here I'm going to hold up. So I think a lot of your work has a similar feel to this. It's abstract, but oftentimes it kind of leans into landscapes. Yes. Do you want to talk about this piece here, um, what inspired it and why you made this one? Sure. Um, a lot of my paintings start off just with no plan in mind. It's just, if I need to paint and I need to let loose and, and let go. I just start with a color, start painting and I add colors as I go. And it just kind of turns into something. And this was one of those times where I had no plan and I just started going wild and you end up painting and then step taking a step back and like looking at it and then realizing, Oh, I don't like that. So you paint over a little bit. It's just, it evolves as it's, as I'm painting and colors are added or taken away and it's just a really fun process. Yeah. I remember asking you, um, what you found challenging about painting and you'd said there's challenges all along the way. And I think people who don't paint, I think their conception is the hardest part is getting started. Probably the, the intimidation of a blank canvas, but you had said somewhere in the middle and I, I paint too. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of agree with that. I think painting at a certain level is kind of like sculpting where you're going to enter this middle phase where you add something on, you'll take it away, you'll add it back, you'll take it away. And there's this push and pull. 
and you never really know when you're going to get past that middle hump when yes, you're making a piece. For sure. So you do a lot of um, landscapes. Have you ever done plein air painting where you go out into the wilderness or the, the park and draw what you see, paint what you see? Yeah, I've I've only done it a couple of times. I want to do it more, but I find I, I don't paint for long periods of time. I paint for short periods of time. Being a mom and having a child, it's like hard to find that time to put a big chunk of time to paint. Um, and so actually getting outside and having the setup and all of that, it's just, it's hard for me to find the time, but I would love to do more of it. There's a group of painters who meet over at Lake Anna in downtown Barberton and do some painting in the summertime. You oh, should, really? Yeah, you should come check it out. Oh, I, I would love I've that. I've done it before. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So obviously you probably do a lot of acrylic then. Yes. If you're putting a little bit on, walking away, makes it a little bit easier to manage. Yes, for sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. W- what would you say is your favorite piece? I think it is the next one I paint. I, I don't think that I have a specific piece that I absolutely love. Um, I have a few in my house that I don't want to get rid of and that I keep, but eventually there will come a time where I'll want to have something new hanging in my house. Um, but I love to try new things. I love to push myself to step out of my comfort zone and try something new. So I think that that's why I like the next piece better each time. Would you say you're still sort of finding yourself in your painting, finding your style of of where you want to go with your work? Sort of. I mean, I think I'm always open to style and I think my style has evolved for sure. Um, Right now, I'm very much into just the expressive, um, smaller brush strokes, um, color, I feel like I have a style right now, but I'm sure that that's going to yeah. change. I think you've got a very co- cohesive body of work. I could see, I looked at everything on your website mm-hmm. and I could tell, yes, these are all by Jen. There's definitely similarities between them, similar styles. Oh, good. Good. I'm glad. So you've got a, um, I was just talking about your website. You've got a fantastic website. I thought it was really well done and professional. Oh, I got to learn mainly everything I learned about you since this is the first time we're meeting mm-hmm. from your social media presence, which I think you've got a strong one. Um, how challenging has it been to develop that? Very challenging. It's social media I have a love-hate relationship with. I mean, it is necessary. It is how I started selling paintings. It's how I people knew that I was painting. Um, it's, But it's very, very time-consuming. It's very... I mean, to, to make it, to have to make a post every single day and then you have to, on Instagram, you have to post a story then and a reel and, and, a, and a picture and, and then there's a, a bunch of other social media channels that you need to work with. And so it's a full-time job in itself for sure. So, but I love it. It's a free way right now to, to get in front of people and to get feedback also. So it's been challenging, but it's definitely a necessary evil. Yeah. Marketing yourself as an artist is hard. And like you said, it's necessary in almost any field. Yes, for sure. So with your work, it's very expressive. There's a lot of brush strokes. How do you know when a piece is done? I sit and stare at it for probably (laughs) the next few days to to even sometimes a few weeks. Um, Yeah, it's I'm a fast painter. I I paint pretty fast, but it is, I feel more times I have to step back and just look and just, I'll put it in different areas of my home to, to look at it, to see what I think. And it may just be a little part where I don't really like that brushstroke. So I need to paint over that, or I need to add this, or I need to add that. And it's just like minute changes that, that end a painting. And when I can be happy with every single part of the painting, then I know it's done. And that is actually fantastic advice. I had a professor in college who would actually set a timer and tell everyone, put your brushes down, walk out of the room, and just spend a few minutes away from your work because you get so laser focused in on the canvas. Yes. And then it it can frustrate you even just being focusing on this one square inch of paint that you keep going back to. Yeah. And walking away from it is actually a great way to kind of resolve all the problems you might be having with finishing a piece. Yes, for sure. So Jen, thank you for being on. It was wonderful having you here. We're looking forward to your show. 
Um, your show is Full Bloom. It will be on display Friday, April 5th to Saturday, April 27th at White Ribbon Galleries in beautiful downtown Barberton. Um, would you like to plug any of your social media? You can be found at... Sure. Um, my website is jenflorentine.com and my Instagram is jenflorentineart. And I think my Facebook is Jen Florentine Studio. Um, but I want to thank you so much for allowing me to have this gallery show. And I'm really excited. It's going to be fun. And I'm excited to hear what people have to say about my work. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the White Rebel Galleries podcast. We've got more coming. Come visit Jen's show April 5th to April 27th at White River Galleries in beautiful downtown Barberton. And coming in May, we've also got Birds of a Feather. Follow us on Facebook or visit whiterivergalleries.org to see what else we've got in store. Thanks for tuning in. White Rabbit Galleries and this show are made possible by donations from viewers and listeners like you. White Rabbit Galleries is a nonprofit 501c3 that serves to provide a space for local artists to create, display, and sell their artwork. We strive to promote the arts and offer educational opportunities to our community. You can donate today at whiterabbitgalleries.org or in person at our location in beautiful downtown Barberton.